Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the information session on the Export Market Development Grants Program, uh, which will focus on the T2 applicants today. I'm Noma Gunich, and I look after the delivery of the Export Market Development Grants Program here in Australia. Uh, also presenting today is my colleague Tracy Butcher, who is the manager of EMDG Policy, and uh, my colleague Trung Ben Liu, who's a senior legal advisor. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge um, the country. We respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians uh, and owners of the lands on which we gather today. We extend it respect to their elders, past and present. We recognise the enduring connection that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have with this land, and we extend our respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples joining us um, on this call today. We acknowledge their rich histories, cultures and contributions. We come to you today from the Gadigal land of the Aura Nation and from the Wurundjeri land of the Kulin Nation in Melbourne. Before we uh, start with our uh, presentations, mm. so just a reminder uh, of housekeeping, uh, your microphone has been turned off and uh, possibly your cameras as well, so please also turn them off if they are still on, if you're not presenting. We are recording this session and uh, we will be publishing the recording on our website uh, very soon. We'll be using Slido for any questions uh, after we finish our presentation part of, of this session today. Please use uh, Slido and use the hashtag EMDG. Slido will open from now on so you can uh, prepare your questions and then at the end we'll stop and um, endeavour to answer most of those. So the purpose of the session today, as I said, is to focus on the T2 applicants. We are delivering another a webinar this afternoon for T3, and yesterday we had a webinar for representative body applicants and also T1. So all of those sessions will be uh, presented and published on our website. We'll provide you with an overview of EMDG very briefly, and then we'll go through changes to EMDG that will apply from round four of the program. Um, they are, as a, you know, as a result of the recent strategic focus of the program, there are some changes to the program um, going forward. Um, we will also go through details of the eligibility requirements for the next round, and uh, we'll spend some time looking at um, on how to prepare to apply applications uh, so that you're ready uh, to come in November and submit it. As I said, there will be a time for questions and answers at the end. So what is EMDG? Probably most of you have applied into the program over the past years, uh, and you're probably very familiar with the program. But just to recap, it is, it is a grants program for Australian businesses to start and grow their exports. Grants can be provided on a match funding basis to small and medium enterprises and their representative bodies to help them undertake export marketing promotional activities or export training. Applicants must meet all eligibility conditions to receive the grant. We have four T's in the program, so going forward, we will retain them in the program in the next round. And as I said, we'll focus on the conditions of T2s. Uh, but just to recap, four T's are for uh, businesses, so one, two, and three, and there is a specific tier for representative bodies. T1s is for businesses who never exported before and they're wishing to start that, and they must be export ready. T2 is for businesses who are exporting but would like to uh, extend, uh, expand their export promotion in, within the existing export markets. T3 is for established exporters who are diversifying into new key markets. And representative body tier is for um, peak industry bodies or representative bodies to support their SMEs achieve export success. Obviously, uh, the funds can be provided to representative bodies to help them with training activities, so uh, they can train their SME members to become export ready, grow their export activities, gain marketing skills, and also support them to uh, diversify their trade. So I will now hand over to my colleague Tracy to take you through the changes of the program. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Nama. So for this round, round four, changes have been made to EMDG and it's important to make sure you're aware of those changes before you apply, particularly if you're familiar with this program already. The changes to EMDG have been made to address challenges that we have had 
and in particular, amendments made as part of the 2020 reforms created much higher demand and delivered lower grant amounts. For rounds one, two, and three, our most recent rounds, we have offered much smaller grant amounts, and this is because of high demand and the need to allocate all eligible applicants a grant across multiple grant years. And we heard from stakeholders that that was a really high concern. Because of lessened eligibility criteria, we've seen a much higher volume of very, very small businesses. And the analysis that we have indicates that those very small businesses are less likely to, to go on to achieve export sales. And among that cohort, we've also see a higher proportion of underspends, which may indicate that some of those businesses are just not ready. An operational review that was undertaken in 2022 found that there was a need to better manage the program to balance the level of interest that we have with our available funding. The budget is reducing to 110 million in 2025-26, which is still a very substantial government investment in the program and small businesses, but we need to make the program work at the budget that we have. The changes that we've made to EMDG have been informed by stakeholder feedback, including public consultation processes. This includes an operational review of the program in 2022, a further public consultation process in 2023, which sought feedback about a range of options for the program, targeted consultation about the rules and aspects of the guidelines in 2024, and this feedback, along with extensive data and analysis, has informed the changes. And we thank those of you who may have participated in some of these processes. The changes we have made aim to maximise benefits of the grants for businesses and deliver higher grant amounts. A key change we are making in line with other established government programs is that applications for EMDG will close once funding is fully allocated to all applicants. This compares to our current approach, which allocates a proportion of funding to all eligible applicants, and it has meant that grants can be very low in a given round because we don't know how many uh, applications might be received. By making the changes, we will be able to offer larger grant amounts for those that are eligible. And we can also let potential applicants know the maximum grant amounts that can be applied for. Hopefully this will provide more clarity to help you plan and prepare your marketing and promotional activities before you apply. There are now new eligibility criteria for small and medium businesses. And changes mean that we're also encouraging certain applicants to diversify into new key markets that have been selected for round four. This will only apply for tier three applicants. We're also making some changes for representative body applicants by seeking more deliberate planning and transparency about how EMDG is being utilised and how it's supporting their small and medium sized businesses. And we're introducing some new compliance measures. So applicants need to be fit to receive a grant, including meeting their tax obligations. The changes will apply from this round of the program, which is round four. Round four will cover a two year period. You may be able to apply for grant agreements for up to two years, depending on your eligibility. The approach provides certainty for successful applicants and reduces the need to apply it each year. The round is for marketing and promotional activities that you may plan for 2025-26 and 2026-27. The program funding that we have for EMDG for those financial years will be fully allocated as a result of the application process that will open in November. Application for representative bodies will open first on the 6th of November. 
Then separate to this, applications for businesses applying for tiers one, two or three will then open on the 12th of November. And we strongly recommend you prepare well ahead of the opening date if you're planning to apply. And there are a number of steps that you can take to do that and we'll talk about that later in the session. We'll be opening applications until the funding is fully allocated for each of the tiers. We'll be assessing those applications in the order in which they're received. And this is very different from the previous grant rounds. However, it's an important way that we are able to manage this program. And it means that we can set maximum grant amounts at meaningful levels. Once the application period is open, it is open, we will regularly communicate the status of the funds. This will be on the Austrade website and the online portal where you submit your applications. You're able to apply for one of four tiers. You can only, however, apply for one tier in a grant round. To choose the tier you should apply for, you'll need to consider where you're at in your export journey, what you might be planning for, and whether you're eligible for that respective tier. As Norma mentioned, this session is focused on tier two, and we'll specifically go through the requirements for tier two shortly. Please carefully consider the tier that's right for you. If you apply for the wrong tier, you may be ineligible. For the round, maximum grant amounts will range from $30,000 up to $80,000 across the different tiers. The maximum grant amount for Tier 1 will be up to $30,000 per financial year, Tier 2 up to $50,000, Tier 3 up to $80,000 and for representative bodies up to $50,000 per financial year. This provides some certainty for the first time about how you how much you might receive if you're successful in the program. The minimum grants available under the program for tiers one, two, and three is $20,000 per financial year. There's no minimum grant size for representative bodies, but all applicants need to be able to match the grant funds. We anticipate that we'll be able to offer around 1,900 grants in total for this round. So while new changes mean bigger grants, not every applicant will receive a grant if there is high, high demand for the round. So as we've indicated, this se session is for potential tier two applicants. To be eligible, applicants need to meet all of the eligibility requirements for tier two. The full details of eligibility criteria are in the guidelines and the rules and you can find those on the EMDG website. So tier two is for businesses that are exporting and have established export revenue, and that are looking to expand their marketing and promotional activities. By that we mean you're looking to do more than you have done previously. And those marketing and promotional activities need to be targeting an existing market that you're currently exporting to. So for example, to reach more potential buyers, you might increase your spending on already existing marketing activities. A business might also introduce new marketing activities. So for example, a business that spent $60,000 in a previous year on Google AdWords might plan to continue spending that and spend an additional amount to attend an international trade fair, for example. And that would meet the requirement of expanding, exporting your, expanding your export marketing and promotional activities. If this doesn't sound like you, another team may be better. There is a webinar for tier three later this afternoon or you'll be able to watch the other webinars online when they're available. For round four, tier three applicants can apply for grants from $20,000 up to $50,000 per financial year. We anticipate offering around 620 tier two grants. 
and the applications for Tier 2 will open on the 12th of November. So you must be an Australian person. This could include an individual whose principal place of residence is in Australia, a company established under an Australian law, or a partnership or trust where more than 50% of the partners are Australian. You must hold a valid ABN when you apply and after you've entered into the grant agreement. We verify this at the assessment stage and before we make any grant payments. And you must have conducted business under the ABN for a minimum of two years at the time you apply. So the two year period is based on the date of application. Your annual turnover must be more than 500,000 and less than 20 million in the year prior to the application being made. For round four, this will be for the 2023-24 financial year. So annual turnover is the total sales by your business over the year and relates to your trading income and a profit and loss statement for the 2023-24 financial year will need to be provided to confirm your turnover. You need to have a high quality plan to market and the plan should tell us what you plan to do in terms of your marketing and promotional activities. This is where you'll also provide information about how you're expanding your marketing and promotional activities within existing markets. The plan must be high quality and unique to your business. To be considered high quality, all mandatory questions must be completed with sufficient detail. And the questions in the plan to market have been incorporated into the application form rather than needing to be a separate document that you attach. You must be able to spend at least $20,000 per financial year of your own money to market your products internationally. This doesn't include the grant amount you're applying for and when you apply, you must demonstrate that you have the capacity to spend at least $20,000 by providing a bank statement. So with the match funding from the grant, this means that you need to be planning to undertake at least $40,000 in eligible expenditure per financial year on activities. You can of course plan to spend more on proposed activities and that might be funded up to the maximum grant amounts available under EMDG. And you'll need to provide realistic estimates of your planned expenditure in your plan to market. You need to be able to match the dollar value of the grant with your own funds. Your total eligible expenditure must be at least double the, the grant amount you're, you're seeking. So for example, if you're awarded a grant agreement of $30,000 per financial year, your total eligible expenditure on marketing and promotional activities needs to be $60,000. The amount in your grant agreement is the maximum you can receive. If you spend more, you won't receive any more grant money. If you spend less, providing it's more than $20,000, you will receive an amount equal to the amount you contribute. And you'll need to declare that you can match the funds at the time of application. You need to be fit to receive a grant and what that means is that you're complying with your obligations under tax laws. It also means that you don't have any outstanding disqualifying convictions, you're not under insolvency administration and you're not conducting your business in an unprofessional or unethical way. In total, you can receive up to eight financial years of EMDG support since July 1990. The eight financial years doesn't need to be consecutive and that has not changed. However, we've now introduced yearly limits for how long you can receive each of the tiers. So within those eight years, 
the new yearly limits are up to two years for tier one, up to four years for tier two, and up to four years for tier three. If you received EMDG previously, you must check your grant history before you apply, and the application form for round four will populate a table of prior grant years. From round four onwards, the way we calculate a grant year towards the eight yearly limit has changed. So for round four grantees, calculations will be based on the number of years within your grant agreement. And if you've received grants previously, the number of grants that have previously been paid. For round four and beyond, grant years will be based on entering into a grant agreement and every period in a grant agreement will count towards the total number of years, regardless if you have no activity in that year. So I'll now pass back to Noma, who will discuss eligible products. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Um, I just had a peek um, into the um, slider questions. There's a lot of questions and we reassure you we'll get to them uh, shortly. Uh, we just wanted to go through um, another section of eligibility uh, that um, concerns eligible products and eligible expenses. So um, as Tracy has outlined, you must be an eligible person, you must have an eligible product and you must plan to have eligible expenses. So um, the EMDG Act Division 4 and the EMDG Rules Part 3 give detailed descriptions of what constitutes an eligible product. Also, the grant guidelines give you at Section 5.2 a lot of detail around uh, the eligible products as well. So um, on the next slide, um, what we need to focus on and just let you know that all eligible products must have substantial Australian origin. So... Um, for example, if you are applying for a product that is a good and it's made outside of Australia, it must satisfy requirements of the substantial uh, Australian origin. And that relates to Rule 19, 19D in EMDG rules. So from round four, we have tightened that rule and there are four criteria you must meet to satisfy that a good that is made outside Australia is of substantial Australian origin. So I'll just read them through. But again, you can see them in the rules and also ex explained in the guidelines. So uh, for the goods that are made outside of Australia, and uh, they must meet all of the four uh, following requirements. The assets used to make the goods ready for sale are mainly or substantially based in Australia. The activities resulting in the goods being made ready for sale are mainly or substantially carried on in Australia. And a significant proportion of the value of the goods is added in Australia the making of the goods um, directly generates employment in Australia. So if you applied an EMDG before, you could just meet three of those four, but going forward, you must meet all four. Again, um, eligible product, as I said, could be a good made uh, in Australia or outside of Australia, and you must meet those Australia origin uh, requirements. Eligible products can also include services. So the EMDG rules recognise eligible services under two categories, tourism services and services other than tourism services. Tourism services must be supplied in Australia to foreign persons. For other services, they must be supplied to foreign persons in or outside Australia. Again, when you, depending on your service, you will need to substantiate um, uh, that and you need to provide a, 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 an attachment with your application. There is a template that we have published on our website for you to have a look complete and have ready when you apply. An eligible product includes an event held in Australia or if the event is held online, it must be provided by an Australian person. An eligible product includes an intellectual property or know-how, which must also satisfy all the relevant substantial Australian origin requirements under the EMDG rules. An eligible product can also be software, which must be a work in which copyright subsists, and the work must be the result of wholly or substantially of work done in Australia. So, as I said, you also must plan to have eligible expenses um, as you are preparing your plan to market and your application. 
It is important that you incur those eligible expenses during the grant agreement term. And for round four, that is in 25, 26, and 26 and 27, if you're applying for both years. So um, your expenses are eligible where they are in respect of promotional activities undertaken during the period of your grant agreement, as I just said, for the purpose of marketing eligible products in foreign countries, and you have a designated connection to those products. So that means you own, you own those products. Section 5.3 of the guidelines has full details of, of those eligible expenses, uh, one by one listed there with a lot of detail around them. So please read the guidelines and also if you'd like to read the rules. But just um, to recap, um, on the slide here you can see that you can maintain a representative in a foreign country and costs associated uh, with that are eligible expenses under EMDG. That can include salaries of that representative, office rental costs, education of the representative um, children if they are attending school in that uh, location, relocation expenses, and of, of course expenses related to recruiting a replace, replacement representative for your um, business. You can also um, claim short trips uh, to a foreign country or short trips within Australia. There we have tightened the rule around um, airfare. So in the past, the EMDG would recognise uh, business airfares, but going forward, it is only up to the economy, economy class equivalent. So if you're planning to travel and claim EMDG for that purpose, please ensure that as you're planning your travel and if you want to purchase higher class tickets, that you only claim equ economy equivalent. So think about what sort of evidence you will need to, uh, to, to have handy, I guess, to upload with your master report when it comes to reporting period. We will provide guidance in the grant agreements and also in master report forms what is required as part of the evidence um, and documents that you need to provide. Consultants can also be uh, the cost associated with having a consultant to help you promote your products is also eligible. Just a, a quick kind of reiteration there, it, it is consultants that help you with promotion, not consultants that help you to write your application forms. So grant writing is not an eligible expense. Soliciting for business in a foreign country is also an, uh, an eligible expense, attending trade shows, for example, and costs associated with, it, with that. Free samples also are eligible. So if you're sending a, a sample of the product to a foreign buyer, uh, that can be an eligible cost, but it is limited up to 15,000. Promotional and adver advertising materials, so preparing that uh, and costs associated with that is, is um, eligible and so are intellectual property um, rights, costs associated with that. So um, please make sure that uh, you read the guidelines again, and if you have any questions around this, uh, feel free to contact us at EMDG Help Desk and we can uh, clarify anything around this for you. It is also important to understand ineligible expenses in the program. So, this slide lists uh, some of those. Um, obviously, when we are um, assessing uh, eligible expenses, we will have regard of ineligible, ineligible expenses, and we'll let you know at a time whether your um, expenses need to be adjusted for that purpose. Uh, expenses covered by other financial assistance schemes or programs or grant programs are not um, uh, eligible expenses, given that it will constitute double dipping. Sale or export of the product uh, contravenes Australian law, um, is not eligible expense. Expenses to solicit sponsorships for invent is not eligible. Capital expenses, trade with New Zealand or any other countries that are listed as sanctioned countries or uh, sanctioned products, that is not eligible under EMVG. Paid expenses or an expense that you already paid for or a third party paid on your behalf, that means that that expense is being paid and you can't claim it again. Government costs, such as tax uh, or levy, is not eligible. Sales-related expenses, again, they're not because EMDG is helping you to promote your products, not to sell them. Uh, remuneration uh, or remuneration-like expenses or salaries for your staff, they're not uh, eligible. Obviously, illegal activities, uh, expenses or products that might have a detrimental impact on Australia's reputation, absolutely not eligible. And as I said, grant writing expenses are not eligible. 
So um, next section, we'll talk more about how do you, how do you, we help you to understand the application process and what do you need to, to do now, between now and November, to get ready to apply. Um, as we said before, we released the guidelines and a lot of information on, on our website for you to read um, and get ready. And uh, you've got um, probably about two months now to, to prepare all the documents and uh, start uh, applying in November. So the first key steps, um, the next slide talks about the key steps in the application process. Very simple eight steps there on the screen that you can see. Anyone can follow those and we're here to help you understand those steps as well. You can send us a, a question through the inquiry line and we'll endeavor to answer your question as soon as possible. So read the guidelines. Guidelines are um, a very detailed document that um, explain the eligibility framework, but also how the program operates. Make sure that you read round four grant guidelines, and that is for 25, 26, and 26, 27 financial years guidelines. The next step, very important step in EMDG, is to have your digital identity or digital ID. ATO can help you with establishing one, um, if not, Austria does not own uh, the MyGov ID identity, so please contact ATO to help you uh, to set it up. But it is important to have it now. It does take a while to set it up if you don't have it, so please start doing so um, immediately um, because we can't help you when, when we open to applications with those technical requirements for uh, MyGov ID, so it's important to have it. The next step is for you to link your ABN. Uh, to RAM, which is another app, again, managed by ATO, so that is required for EMDG purposes. Um, and once you've done it, please try to log into the EMDG online portal using your MyGov ID credentials to test the, the process, so you're ready to, uh, for November. The next thing that you need to, uh, to ensure that you have is your ANSI code. So your four-digit uh, industry classification that describes your business, we will ask you for that in the application. So please have it handy. As I said, our website has got not only guidelines, there is a quick checklist for you to go through to prepare to apply. There are exemplar documents and there's a sample application form for each tier. So for this tier, there is a T2 sample application form with all questions outlined that you will be asked in the online uh, later, uh, in the MDG online portal later in November. So you can use this sample application form to prepare answers and be ready to cut and paste it later in the online form. The online form is designed to actually ask you those core eligibility criteria for your specific tier upfront. So if you don't meet them, you don't progress to the next stage. And that means uh, you're not wasting your time um, in completing the form and finding out later that you're not eligible. So we have tried to redesign the form to help you with that process. A key document that you will need to start preparing soon is the high quality plan to market. So the emphasis is on the high quality. In the past, if you applied an EMBG, we asked you for a simple plan to market or simple business document that outlines your exporting um, plans. What we are asking you to do now is look at a template that we have uh, published on our website, um, look at those questions and start preparing responses. High quality means that you answer every question satisfactorily and that you are also planning your expenses and there is a clear budget and clarity on how you're going to promote your products and also what you're doing now or have been doing in the past and what you plan to do differently into the future um, for the purposes of e getting the EMDG grant. So if your um, plan is not of high quality, if there's only little or not sufficient information, your plan to market may be rejected as part of the assessment process because we won't have time to go back and forth and clarify things with you given the way how we're assessing in the order applications are received and closing the T's to applications once we allocate the funding. We won't have time to go back and forth. It wouldn't be fair on applicants that are ready to go and have prepared a high quality plan to market. So please spend time between now and November to develop those uh, plans. Um, for your business. They must be unique and unique to your business. So please, um, for those of you who are using grant agents, it's important that uh, plan to markets are very unique to your business and not a copy of someone else's uh, plan because we will be looking at them as part of the assessment process. 
There are a, a couple of other mandatory attachments depending on the product or service that you're applying for. So there will be a couple of declarations that you need to make. Uh, these are documents that you read as part of the application process and then declare in the application that you uh, understand them. If you are applying, uh, if your eligible product or service is a service other than tourism, there is a template for you to complete and attach with your application form. And similarly, as we outlined before, Goods Made Outside of Australia um, also has its own attachment to be uh, provided in the application form. Again, there is a template on our website for you to complete. The guidelines outline all the evidentiary documents that you need to provide with your application form. And that is to substantiate your that you're exporting as a T2, you must be a, an exporter. Uh, so export sales, um, at least two invoices preceding the application year. So in the past 23, 24 financial year, we want to see two, at least two export sale invoices um, attached to your application. Obviously, profit and loss and balance sheets so to substantiate your turnover and that your business has been in operation for at least two years. Capacity to spend is an important requirement going forward in EMDG, so at least 20000 uh, in your bank account. So that needs to be submitted with your application. So the bank statement, a copy of a bank statement needs to be uploaded. Uh, to your application. And then later on with the master report, we'll ask you, if you're applying for two years, we'll ask you to see it again for the for the 26, 27 financial year. Evidence of tax compliance. So again, if you applied an EMDG before, we were asking you uh, during the assessment process to provide the, that evidence. Now we're asking you to do that as part of your application. For the reason, the way how we're assessing, now we need to have everything on hand and assess applications quickly. So that could be your business activity statement, your notice of assessment, or your statement of account. If, um, if you have an existing tax debt, um, you must have a repayment plan in place, and you must provide evidence of that to Austrate to substantiate that you are actually tax compliant and that you are um, you know, uh, adhering to the debt plan uh, requirements. For SMEs that operate as a trust, uh, we ask you to upload your trust deed. We also ask you for, uh, as you are completing the application, for the ABN of, of the trustee and also ACN of the trust, and the trustee needs to be submitted. And again, uh, as I outlined before, those um, templates, depending on which product you're applying for, need to be submitted. We'll open to applications at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time at, uh, on 12th of November. So please be ready by then and um, look at our guidelines and all documents um, before you start uh, preparing your applications. Um, as I said, uh, we will be monitoring uh, the demand of the program uh, and we will be advising you on the EMDG online portal, how we are tracking with that demand by tier. So you will be able to see how the funding is being allocated. The funding is being allo allocated on the grant amount requested. So obviously submission rate will be much higher than our assessment rate. Uh, so it will be allocated based on what you're requesting. We will close uh, until we probably exceed a little bit of that uh, funding allocation, given that we're setting aside a buffer or allowance for um, applications that may be ineligible, or if we offer someone a grant agreement and that is not accepted, that money gets, uh, you know, becomes available for the next eligible applicant um, uh, on the list. So we will be advising you in the EMDG online portal and also on our website. We'll send you emails once the funding allocation is exhausted, so you know that the round is closed and you don't attempt to um, submit again. So. Um, Watch out, I guess, in terms of um, how of those news if you submit your application. It is important also to know that some, some applicants may miss out. So even if you submit your application um, prior to us closing the portal, and we may allocate funding before we come to assess your application. So that is important also to, to know, um, so we can manage expectations in that regard as well. Um, okay. Also, just to reiterate, incomplete or late applications will not be accepted. So make sure that you have attached everything and um, that high quality plan to market is uh, completed and ready to, to be uploaded. Also, to, um, to reiterate, the application form 
has specific questions for the plan to market embedded in the form. So you're not uh, to be uploading uh, Word documents of your plans. You need to answer questions within the form. Okay, that brings me to the end of the how to prepare to apply. Just quickly, some more information from Austrade. In addition to EMVG, Austrade has got other resources for exporters on the Go Global Toolkit pages, such as uh, training and tools and information and advice around exporting. So please check it out. It is on export.business.gov.au. Uh, so it's not on Austrade website, it's a BGA website, but it is linked from Austrade website as well. So there's a lot of information about markets and market insights and research. Uh, it can help it can help you with thinking about your exporting plans and help you with your uh, plan to market preparations too. Uh, so please check it out. It is free of charge and available to all businesses. And again, if you have any questions, please contact us at emvg.help at austria.gov.au. Uh, or call us on 13 28 78. You can also subscribe to EMVG newsletter updates and visit our website anytime. We're now opening for questions, so Slido. So Slido is just checking. Yes, there's a lot of questions on Slido and uh, we will try now to answer most of them, if not all. Uh, if we don't get to answer your question, apologies for that, uh, given the timing limit of this webinar, but you're welcome to write um, a, an inquiry to emdg.help and we'll endeavour to answer it again. But your question may be answered in the guidelines, so please do read them. All right, let's have a look. So Namara, I can do one okay. that, um, that came in first, I think. It says, we, we've been granted EMDG 10 years ago where there were no tier concepts, um, can they still apply under round four? Um, it looks like they've received three years of grants already. So the answer to that one would be yes, you, you, you may still apply if you meet the eligibility conditions. And the three year, years worth of grants that you've received previously will count towards your eight yearly overall limit. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, will the example forms be completely representative of the portal? Will it be as simple as copy pasting in prepared answers? Yes, there will be. Obviously, the online form might have a different um, order, given as, as I said, explained before, um, you might be asked the first questions uh, around which market are you applying for, what tier are you applying for, uh, and then plan to market questions will be in a separate section of it. So we'll try to, um, you know, follow, develop the form in the same cadence of questions, but it might not be exactly the same. So just warning you there. Okay. I've seen my question be yes. re repeated a number of times. Of course, in the past yes. Three. Okay. It's not really a legal question, but I think um, some people just wonder about why we use the words marketing and promotion activities. Yes. For the same, what the difference between them? Mm -hmm. um, my answer to that is actually we use the marketing and the promotion activity interchangeably. Yes. And they mean the same. And then those specific marketing and promotion activities are described. Um, in the relevant section of the rules, uh, in, including but not limited to obviously representation, short trips to overseas, short mm -hmm. trips uh, in Australia, those yes. specific uh, eligible marketing and promotion activities mm -hmm. will be considered um, mm -hmm. you know, under this program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes. And it's also referenced in the, in the rules. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, there's a question about balance sheet, if they can just provide a balance sheet to prove that they got 20,000. So the answer is no. Your balance sheet will be for your preceding financial year, 23, 24, to substantiate the turnover, you know, to substantiate, obviously, that your business has been in existence for two years, because we're asking that for two years. But the bank statement is at the time of application. So we'd like to see that too. So I've got a question here to Nama about, um, it says, hi, we qualify for both tier two and tier three. How do we decide which we can apply for? Can we apply for both? So the answer to that would be you must, you can, you can only apply for one tier in the grant round. So you might have to make a decision about what's best for your business at this point in time, whether you want to help consolidate what you're already doing in an existing market or whether you'd like to um, expand your activities in, or diversify your activities to a new market. 
Thank you, Tracy. There's a question about uh, allocation of funding. So does the funding not paid out to applicants get relocated to ensure that the full budget of amount is used up? If not, where do, do unused funds go? So EMDG is a demand driven program and we appropriated really to expend all those funds for the purposes of EMDG. We intend to allocate or commit all funding that is available uh, in the round four. So that's why I explained the concept of that allowance for ineligible applications or someone not accepting their grant agreement. So those funds that get released um, from someone not accepting their grant agreement will be reallocated to the next eligible applicant in that buffer. So it will be utilized for the purposes of fu funding EMDG um, successful applicants. Uh, if your question is about underspends in the program, we utilize those underspent funds for uh, reallocating that current in, in the current program for people who are, who are submitting their master reports early or on time and are spending this plan. So funds are utilized effectively in EMDG. They don't go back to anywhere. Um, we have a few questions about minimum turnover again. So perhaps yes. it's useful to reiterate um, if you are um, earning under the minimum turnover requirements, you may not be eligible for a given tier. So the minimum requirements are for tier one, $100,000, for tier two, $500,000, and for tier three, $1 million. And that annual turnover is for the 2023-24 financial year. Yep. So there's a question received six votes in, uh, here. I guess actually the reason for that, um, the question also has or begging the question about the um, uh, the concept of, of export as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the question here, I'd like to read it out. We have engaged an overseas re representative in New York, but are yet to achieve sales in the US. Is this considered an existing market and are therefore eligible for tier two? Um, just based on information being provided in this question, my mm -hmm. view to that is essentially if you only engage an overseas representative, which means that you conduct in the actual promotion and marketing activities only, mm -hmm. but without actually seeing the export sales coming through, um, it won't be sort of considered as existing market. The existing market to me is actually the market that you're currently exporting to. Correct. So, so, that's right. so they must have sales. If you yeah. intend to expand in the US as part of T2 application, mm -hmm. then uh, you must have export sales in that market. Um, if you haven't achieved sales, then no, you cannot apply. Yes, there is a question about, just, I'm moving a bit down. No. How is, uh, maybe Tracy, we can, I can start and maybe you can uh, add to this one. How is a market defined? If we have worked in a subcontinent market in the last few years and now want to expand to Southeast Asia, does this apply under T2 or should we apply in T1? So market is defined as a single economy or a single country. So uh, it's not a region. Tracy, would you like to add to anything to that? Yeah, so I think um, uh, we're thinking about whole countries or whole economies uh, yes. when we talk about markets. Um, and so if you're, you're exporting currently to an existing country, that would be considered your existing market. Um, we've got a couple of questions that I guess um, go to um, if, if people have received Tier 3 grants for three years, for example, or a Tier 2 grant for three, three years, um, what, what would they then be eligible for? Well, the new yearly limits mean um, under both Tier 2 and Tier 3, you can receive those up to four years. So if you've received three years of a Tier 3 grant agreement, you can um, apply for one more year. Hmm. There is a question about tax return. So what if you're a sole trader and haven't done your last two years tax return? So I guess you must be tax compliant. So that goes to your um, requirement of that. And you need to substantiate that you are tax compliant by providing us with your tax um, uh, evidence of that. So unfortunately, you wouldn't meet those requirements. 
Uh, will they be recordings of today's and yesterday's webinars available? Yes, absolutely. We'll publish them as soon as they're ready on our website and we'll also send an EDM to uh, participants to let them know. There's a couple of questions about the, the online form and whether you can pre-populate that. And Nema, I believe the answer is no. No. Um, however, um, there are sample application forms for each of the tiers on the website, so you can definitely start thinking about how you will answer the questions. That is correct, Tracy. So, no, we will be opening on the day, uh, as we uh, let you know earlier, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on the 12th of November, and um, that is when you can start populating your application forms. But prior to that, you can have your... Uh, Word documents ready and cuff and paste answers. There was a question and it just was removed. I don't know. I couldn't see it. But there was something about once you open on the 12th of November, um, when, how long will it be open for? So we don't know. It depends on demand in that year. So we will close once the, as I explained before, once the funding is fully allocated in that year. So it could be within days or weeks. We don't know. There were also a couple of questions talking about the turnover again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, just a question about is the turnover for only exporting portion or the overall domestic and overseas? It's your annual turnover that you earn as part of running your business. So it's it, it, including, yes, both including both export sales and, and domestic sales. sales. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's a good question about underspending. So if um, if they, because questions are being added. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what if um, we receive twenty thousand and we will be required to spend forty thousand, but in the end we end up spending only thirty? What would happen to our grant? Well, you can only get the minimum twenty. I guess, and if um, if you spend less than that, then you won't be. Um, you won't be getting a grant because the minimum grant amount is twenty thousand. So if you only spend twenty, we can't give you ten. So be that is why EMDG going forward is a bit different. So we are not entertaining small amounts to be spent, and us then spending a lot of time assessing applications for really small amounts. So you really need to be ready to expand and um, uh, incur that expenditure as planned. There's a couple of questions about um, how long you'd need to have been in business. So just to reiterate, it's two years uh, in business under the same ABN. So there's a question about are charities eligible to apply mm -hmm. for tier two grants? I guess, well, there's um, nothing in the Act or the rules precluding charities to be an eligible entity as long as the charities actually meet all the general applicability requirements. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But are charities exporting? That's another question. Yeah. <laughs> if we can meet export. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So some charities actually are more likely. Yes, are. we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. They do export. Okay. There's a good question about when is the grant amount paid and how is the grant audited? So um, the grant, so just the process of, um, again, reiterating, once you apply in November, we will be assessing applications and advising you if you're eligible or not. If you're not eligible, we'll send you an email advising you of that outcome. If you are eligible and successful to be offered a grant agreement, you will probably hear from us sometime in early 25, given that we need time to assess applications. So sometime in late January, you might receive an email to say, you're successful, please um, see your grant offer and you have 21 days to accept that offer. Uh, after you've done so, then uh, Austria will co-sign your grant agreement that, that constitutes an executed grant agreement, so contractual obligations start to be uh, in force. And then uh, from July 25, that's when the appropriation for the round four starts, we will start making payments based on risk assessment of our grantees. We may start uh, paying you an initial payment of at least 20,000, which is your minimum grant amount. And then later during the year, the milestone portal will be open. You submit your milestone report, request a second payment for that year and so forth for the, for the following year. 
So um, as you know, in round four, we are asking you for more information during the application form. We'll also publish the milestone report later in the year to show you those questions and evidence that you need to provide with that milestone report. And uh, everything will be assessed and audited as, as someone has asked before we make that payment. No, but this one might be for you, but there's um, a question about current grantees and their milestone reports. Okay. Um, so if, if a company has current a current grant agreement with a milestone report due in the financial year 2025 mm -hmm. and a follow-up report is required in 26, can they still apply for round four? Okay. So... Um, the information about follow-up reports is about to be sent to all grantees, so watch this space. We'll advise you very soon of that. In terms of uh, you requiring to submit a milestone report for 24-25, yes, you absolutely need to do that. I assume you're round three grantee with expenditure in 24-25. The milestone portal is open for you now to do so if you're ready, if you're um, ready to submit expenditure for this year, if you've incurred it already. So... Um, but yes, you can apply for round four if you meet eligibility conditions of the program. The reason being, round four is for expenditure from 25, 26 and 26, 27. Ah, can the grant funds under T3 be used for new and existing export markets? We'll have a webinar for T3s this afternoon. We can, we can explain it there. But the simple answer is no. You cannot apply across the two Ts. You can only choose um, one tier that best suits your exporting journey. Uh, but expenses in your existing markets and new key markets cannot be mixed in your master report. So you need to choose which one you're applying for. So there's a question about can the annual turnover minimum of $500,000 include international turnover, i.e. not under ABM profit lost and uh, international entity owned by Aus Australian businesses? So my understanding is actually um, the uh, business actually has uh, overseas subsidiary <clears throat> or associated companies overseas, and then they want to consolidate. Mm. Uh, the revenue together to meet the five hundred thousand dollars threshold. Mm -hmm. So, my understanding is it's no. Mm -hmm. uh, the annual turnover is per ABN. Yes. yes. So this is ABN that the entity is applying. Australian. To. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, maybe we'll just get, take one or more or qu two questions and then we can uh, wrap up. Uh, there's a question about zero master reports in the current uh, program. Do they count towards the A3 limit? In the, the, the current calculations of the zero master reports remain the same. So zero master report does not constitute a grant year. But going forward, entering into a grant agreement will constitute a grant year. So if, even if you haven't spent anything, it will count as a grant year towards the A2 limit. Okay, maybe one more question. Mm -hmm. If your previous export is to New Zealand, does this then count as not exporting? No, it does count as exporting because you have exported to a country. Only promotional activities to New Zealand are not eligible under EMDG. Okay. Um, and again, to reiterate, when the grant payments will be made, will they be in advance? So um, uh, just explained before, we will uh, start payments from July 25 at the start of the grantee as an initial partial payment based on risk assessment of our grantees. And the following payment in that grantee will be after you submit and we assess your milestone report. And I think we can wrap it up here. Thank you very much for all your questions and engagement. Um, good luck with your preparations to apply in November. Um, and if you've got any other questions, please contact us on, um, on those um, contact points uh, shown on this slide. And we wish you all the best. Thank you.